Welcome, and thank you for joining us for worship the week of November 14th, 2021. Whenever and wherever you may be joining us from, I'm just glad you're here. Now we return back to our regularly scheduled programming as God's commissioned artists exploring how God draws us in through all that God weaves and all that we weave. The original word for this week was reintegrate, and for both Pastor Mary Kay and I, that word, while used in the study of Christian spirituality, we felt didn't really capture the depth of relationship that this worship and this series was trying to communicate. So I looked up the word weave and to weave in the dictionary. And one of the definitions states that to weave is to compose a connected whole by combining various elements or details. And this felt like it captured what we will hear in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, discovering the ways that God weaves us together and weaves the very threads of creation together. As we reflect on those threads of creation being woven together, I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship by taking a deep breath in, breathing in the breath that is God's, and resting in God's presence. In the world of the driven, let us be drawn in. Let your love be a given, let us be drawn in. To imagine, to dream, to create, to redeem. For the sake of the living, let us be drawn in. Everything that is created is in relationship with all other things. God's vision for birds had to do with the quality of the creation of air. How a song is experienced by those who sing it will change the composer's perception of the song or even the song itself. Nothing exists in isolation, and so too for our relationships with others. What happens for humanity is closely related to how we respond to each other. Are we willing to reintegrate, revise, revision our lives as we come in contact with others who are not like us? New possibilities await if we are willing to offer ourselves fully and be willing to be changed by our interactions. Weaving God, you created us for relationship with you and others. Open us to be changed as we encounter the diversity of your children. Draw us into your love. Give us the courage to reach out in love. Amen.
For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot were to say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear were to say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body either. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as God chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I was having a conversation with Pastor Mary Kay recently, and we were watching a video in preparation for Advent, and it was a video of scriptures as well as a caterpillar weaving its chrysalis as it prepared to transform into a butterfly. I was in awe and began to wax poetic about how truly fascinating, wonderful, inspiring, and even at times confusing nature truly is. What fascinates me is how everything has its place, how everything just seems to know what to do. The squirrels know that they need to start storing food for winter. The birds begin to fly south. The trees start changing their leaves and dropping them in preparation for the cold, cold winter months here in Michigan. But I always wonder, how do they know what they're supposed to do? And the answer so often is, they just do, which is remarkably unsatisfying. Pastor Mary Kay, maybe she didn't even realize this, but she said in a response to that moment of awe that I had that they just do what they're intended to do. So let's just copy nature. And this wisdom that she shared has helped me to understand just what Paul is getting at for our scriptures and through our scriptures for this week, helping me understand just what he's saying in these words. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, is calling people to discover who and how and what they are meant for in this world, otherwise known as inviting people to discover and find their vocation or their calling. Paul is inviting people to realize that they, that we, that you are a part of this incredible body of Christ. Paul is calling us to realize and accept the ways which we are connected to others for specific reasons that we may or may not even realize yet. For instance, we surround ourselves with particular people in our lives and each one of them play a unique role. Some of those are good with money, and so we turn to them for financial wisdom. Others are nurturers and caregivers, and so we may turn to them for emotional support. I think about my own family and friends. I have those that I turn to when making a big life decision. I have those that I call when I just need someone to be angry or sad or upset alongside me. It doesn't mean that I appreciate or value the others any less. It just means that I recognize that everyone offers something unique and different that helps to shape and form who I am. As we name the gifts that others bring into our lives, think about your own gifts. What do people come to you for? What do you share with the world? What talents and wisdoms do you just know how to do as though you didn't even have to think about them? Seriously, I, I want you to think about this like, like now. So I invite you to go ahead and pause this service right now and take out a pen and paper and reflect on 
What gifts do you bring? What gifts do you have to share? I'm pausing if you haven't paused. Did you discover anything surprising? Are you the one who navigates and manages family crises? Are you the family member that folks turn to for a listening ear? Are you the one in the family who's able to give honest feedback and compassionate criticism, which is a gift and a talent all unto itself? Are you good with money and people turn to you for financial advice? Or are you perhaps still searching for your gifts? Let's kind of delve into this idea of naming our gifts a bit more. Think about how you relate to others beyond your family and friends, your immediate circles. How do you relate to groups, book clubs, service organizations, or your churches or, or faith communities? How do you relate to strangers that you meet as you're just passing by? As we name our gifts, we begin to see our calling or our vocation unfolding before us. And this starts to get at what Paul is talking about in the text and how the body of Christ is one, but it is made up of many members. Each person in our lives, including ourselves, plays a particular role. One perhaps we never expected to play, or perhaps we just realize now. This realization, this epiphany, this acknowledgement becomes how we see ourselves and how God sees us as essential to the world and to the work and the ministry of Jesus Christ. As Mary Kay mentioned in her off-the-cuff moment comment about God's creatures, that they do what they're intended to do. So let's just copy nature. It seems simple enough, but we're human, and we're complicated, and we like to complicate things. So let's look at what nature is doing. Nature is doing nothing more than being who they are and living that life to the full. They are following the ways that they were wired and speaking back, giving back to creation the very life that God gave to them. You begin to see just how this tapestry of creation is woven together and draws us into the life that God intended for us. It is our nature to be community. It is our nature to be part of something bigger than ourselves. It is our nature to love, to share, to care, to serve, and have compassion for one another and participate in life as much as we possibly can until our time is done. But from our own unique vantage points. So let's just do what we are called to do and what we know to do. Playing our part, but working together because we are woven together as the body of Christ. Amen. Let us be drawn in to God's holy presence as we pray together. Draw us in to the sounds and rhythms of those crying for justice and peace. Weaving God, draw us in. Draw us in to relationship with all of creation, helping us to discern our role in caring for, nurturing, and sustaining this brilliant blue orb for generations to come. Weaving God, draw us in. Draw us in to the warmth of your embrace for the burdens of the world which we carry and share together. Weaving God, draw us in. Draw us in 
to hear your still, small voice clearly, the one that guides, strengthens, and prepares us for all that awaits. Weaving God, draw us in. In this moment of silence, let us lift up all the cares and celebrations on our hearts this day. God gathers up the strands of all our prayers and weaves them together into a beautiful tapestry. In the confidence of that graceful weaving God, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship this week. I invite you to continue reflecting on the ways that God is weaving us into the very fabric and fibers of creation. Look for the ways that you find your calling, the ways that people turn to you, and how you can then share those gifts with the world. Hear now these words of benediction. May you see the unfolding of each day as an opportunity to be a co-creator with God. As a Jesus follower, may you feel his company leading you toward creating more kindness, justice, and mercy. And may you know the nudge of the creative spirit within, making belief in all you are and do. We all are one in mission. We all are one. Our varied gifts united by Christ the Lord of all. A single great commission compels us from above to plan and work together that all may know Christ's love. We all are called for service to witness in God's name. Christ the Lord of all.